Shakespeare's Measure for Measure is a play whose plot is driven by anxieties about the vulnerability of a man's head. Claudio is sentenced to execution early in the play. He is going to have his head cut off for premarital sex. Indeed, as his friend Lucio comments, his head is so vulnerable on his shoulders that a milkmaid, if she be in love, could sigh it off. There seems to be only one solution to Claudio's predicament. The corrupt judge and governor, Angelo, offers to save Claudio if his sister, Isabella, who is about to become a nun, will often her, offer her maidenhead or virginity in exchange for her brother's head, her body in exchange for her brother's life. Measure for Measure is a play interested in weighing up what different things are worth and whether one thing can be substituted for another. This monstrous bargain, as critics have often called it, lies at the centre of the play, the question of what Isabella will do with the impossible choice that Angelo has offered her. The play then is concerned with weighing men's lives against women's virginities two different categories of head. But it is also interested in a third conception of head, the head of the household. In this period, the husband or father was expected to rule over his wife, his children, his servants, as the head rules over the body. Women were expected to submit to their husband or male relative. They were expected to be under his authority and under his protection. Pompey, the pimp turned hangman in the play, makes a joke that he could never cut off the head of a married man because a married man is the head of his wife and he could never cut off a woman's head. But the play features an unusual number of headless women, women ungoverned by any man. We have Isabella about to become a nun, about to enter under the authority of a woman, the prioress, but because she hasn't yet done so and her only surviving male relative Claudio is in prison, she experiences a peculiar freedom, able to move freely through the masculine places, spaces of the play and to speak freely to the powerful men she encounters. There is also Juliet, Claudio's betrothed, whose pregnancy betrayed to the world the fact that she'd had premarital sex with Claudio. There is Mariana, the abandoned fiance of the corrupt governor, Angelo. There is a sex worker and unmarried mother called Kate Keepdown. And there is a brothel keeper, Mistress Overdon, who rules over her own household and is her own head. The majority of these women experience extreme vulnerability because of their headless state. They find themselves vulnerable to the attention of the state, to the possibility of prison. But even though Isabella experiences sexual coercion because of her headless um, state in the play, she also experiences the possibility of free movement and speech and ungovernable, threatening, anxiety-provoking ability to speak truth to power. Her headless state is the thing that makes her vulnerable, but it's also the thing that makes her vocal, eloquent, impassioned, able to make change in the play and challenge existing structures. It's what makes her one of Shakespeare's most powerful heroines.